Hello again and welcome back to Mackenzie Woodworking. So our project today is a strawberry pot tree. As you can see there it is there. We're using six inch terracotta pots and we've planted some strawberry plants in it. So I'll just walk you through the process. The first thing I do is draw out the pot on a uh, piece of cardboard. And you can see there I measure the length so we have uh, four inches and then uh, and then the top is an inch and a half and I come you know, just on the other side on my template of the, the hole in the bottom so that gives you support for the bottom and then the notch comes down a, a, a inch on the inside so I take the uh, I'll take that and then transfer that to a piece of quarter inch and refine it a bit and I'll try that again and, uh, and you can see that that it'll fit. And you're gonna want to, uh, whenever you, uh, you're gonna need six terracotta pots for this project. Um, I was using the ones I found in the yard and I had to sort through them. Um, not all six inch pots are the same, they're all different. So find six, find a pattern that you're gonna use, measure it out and then start with a piece of paper and uh, just make sure it works there and then you can follow along. Uh, the stock that we're using for our tree is one inch thick so I've um, transferred all those marks and what I've done is rounded the back side of it, uh, the top, so that whenever you go to uh, put the uh, pot into it it'll, uh, it'll go in easy and has lots of room and then I'll sit down on the foot and it can't fall out because of that uh, return on the top that's hanging on to it. As you can see, it'll be quite stable. So once I have that, so that's on the stock that we're using. And our stock is one inch thick. And what I'm using is decking boards. They're readily available. They're um, usually selected tight knot, so they're a good product. And they're easy to find at all the uh, stores in the area. And I'm just making a... Uh, I'll refine my original template there. So what I'm doing is taking an inch off of them uh, because I'll be running a dado in a, uh, a full two by two cedar six feet long. So I need a square edge and I don't need the, the entire six inch wide of the board. So I'm, I'm taking a, an inch off of it. And I can save that and use it for another project. So these pieces on the upper part of the tree are three feet long. And here I am on the round portion. I'm going to use a Forstner bit, and that's an inch and five eighths that I'm using. And then I can just make the flat notch with my jigsaw. So once once I have them all cut out, then I'll just use a jigsaw. So in two pieces, I'll have one pot in the center, and then on the opposing pieces, I'll have two pots. So you have six pots in total. Uh, one board will have two, and, and two boards will have one. And then just using a, a jigsaw, a saber saw. If you have a bandsaw, you can do a lot of this on the bandsaw, but it's just as easy to run it. So here I'm just doing a test piece. Uh, this is a cutoff on the uh, length of board that I had for the, uh, the main part of the tree. And what I use is um, uh, I need one inch wide, so I put in a dado set that's uh, five eighths, and I'll just adjust the fence until I get the exact size that I need back and forth. And then I'll turn the board around so I can get it directly in the center. So I'll just give it a test, and there's the cutoff pieces, and you can see that it fits nice. So I've continued that on my longer piece. So on the, on the top, I've measured down 34 inches and, uh, and uh, that's actually where I've, I've stopped running it through my table saw. So it's a, it's a stop dado and it doesn't come all the way to the mark. And then uh, what I'll do is I'll drop the boards in and I've made a reference mark there. And then I'll just mark along the side and I'll go to the bandsaw and take that quarter inch um, off. So I'll make a quarter inch notch and that will float over the stop dado on the bottom so it can just run right through if you if you want to do this on a router table you can do it on a router table and go right to the end but uh, uh, 
easier and quicker way. This is outside patio furniture and in the garden. Um, we're not building a piano today, so. So we're just making uh, a notch there. And I'll uh, measure it on the top. These will be going right to the top. And then I can just make a mark at my reference mark there. And I'll take them, that to the bandsaw and nip that off. And that's just taking that, that notch out of it first shoot and it'll float over the, the stop end dado. And when you're doing this, you're dropping uh, one end down onto the saw when you flip it around. So you want to hang onto your board and make sure that it's very stable and square. Uh, take the time and uh, find a good square board. You see there, oh, it just floats over and it's flush with the top. So I've marked all these out and I'll uh, continue to cut all the other ones and I'll round the top and I'll put a, a bit of a scallop on the bottom or an OG and, uh, and then we can fit them in and give them a finished sand before I put them in and um, pre-drill some holes for screws and I'll be putting the screws through the uh, round part that I drilled they will be going to the uh, top of the pot. And you want to make sure that you uh, pre-drill and countersink your holes so that you, you don't split these. So you can see that the main piece going up is cedar and then the, the the pieces that will be hanging the pots on are cypress or yellow cedar. So just doing a dry fit again before we sand it. And I'll make sure that everything's working. And then I'll just make reference marks. As you notice on the side of the board, I've got one marked in uh, so that I know where, which one goes where. Okay, they're all sanded and cut. We'll just put some glue on it. I like to use a type on three it gives you a little bit more time to work with it and uh, you can see that's where I pre-drill the hole right at the round portion and we'll just put our glue in there and uh, this is all weather glue so it's good outside and I'll just use one screw and a bit about the screws uh, whenever I'm using cedar and outside I like to use uh, coated screws. They're porcelain coated so that they won't uh, blacken your, your cedar. If you've ever done any work with cedar and used normal deck screws or, or uh, chrome screws, chrome plated screws, zinc screws, you'll notice that they always blacken your cedar. So you're only using a few screws. Go and get some uh, porcelain coated screws. They're quite reasonable now. take a picture of this and then I'll show you how we attach the uh, and drew the feet out for the base of the tree. So you see on one wing we have two and on the other wing we only have one in the center. And when this gets filled with leaves and strawberries it completely fills it. And you can use uh, tomato plants or strawberries or, or herbs of any kind. It can be a her herb tree. And then you put your different herbs in it. Just showing you there how they notch in and set on the bottom quite nicely. Well, here's the feet that we're doing. And I've taken a half inch notch off the bottom of them and left an inch on the outer edge and that's where it'll be sitting so that keeps it off the ground and they'll keep this stable. What I'm, uh, I have is a, a set of uh, French curves they're called. They're used in drafting and furniture design and this is uh, what I use to uh, draw my angles of the feet. And if you do a lot of woodwork and stuff you should pick yourself up a, a set. You can get them at uh, drafting and design stores and probably um, stationery stores. They're called French Curves. They work great in a shop. Give you nice smooth lines. So we'll be drilling and screwing two holes in each. And 
that'll be on our main tree stem. So I've glued that and just put in one screw at the top. And then I'll take the square and uh, run it along the vertical length. And then we can just square up the foot on the bottom so that it's uh, 90 degrees. And like everything outside, use exterior glue. Just bang that. I shouldn't have made that uh, one screw so tight, but there it is. Just square it up. And then we can fasten that down. And we want to follow suit to that all the way around. So there's the end. You can see on the first one you go right to the edge and then you turn your board a, a quarter of a turn and then you can mount them again all the way along the same way. And this is an easy way and quite stable. So here we are on the deck and you can see that we've got all the pots mounted in and filled with strawberry plants. And if you're doing strawberry plants, uh, what we've done is we use ever-bearing strawberries and that will give us strawberries throughout the entire year. Uh, we had a big bed out front, so we just dug some of those out. And uh, you can see the feed there, it's quite stable. It was a windy day that we are taking these pictures and this didn't move along at, at, at all. So I'm calling it a strawberry tree, but it can be a, a pot tree and you can put you know, strawberries in it and other things as well. And if you got a patty with this off your kitchen, it would make a great herb tree. The real uh, bonus about this is that you can change the pots in and out. Uh, you can revolve the tree around so that uh, each side will uh, get some sun on it. And it's an easy weekend build. But, or if you're a builder seller, these sell really well at uh, plant shows and seed shows. Uh, people really love them. And I'm not going to paint this. So I want it to go to the natural gray. But if you want it to paint it up or uh, use painted pots, and if you're doing strawberries, uh, you could even go with a nice bright red. But I hope you enjoyed this project. And it's a relatively easy build. So, uh, And I hope you support this channel. Uh, and I'll uh, load up some more videos. Thanks a lot for watching.